satu penghormatan bagi Malaysia bila kita adakan sidang yang penting ini kerana seperti mana yang kita telah umumkan dalam kerangka ekonomi madani bidang digital dan semikonduktor merupakan paksi dalam pertumbuhan ekonomi dan juga melayakkan negara meningkat ke satu tahap yang lebih membanggakan. Oleh itu, kita telah berusaha dan khususnya kepada keluarga MITI di bawah pimpinan Saudara Tuku Zafrul yang telah mengusahakan satu rangkaian dan mendapat menarik pelaburan dan minat yang bertambah kepada Malaysia dan juga Asia Tenggara. Saya dengan itu menganggap sidang ini yang dilaksanakan dengan kerjasama SEMI dan terima kasih kepada Ajit Manoca dan seluruh pasukan dengan penyertaan yang begini hebat dan membanggakan dan memberikan keyakinan lonjakan semangat baru Malaysia supaya dapat mengangkat ke satu martabat yang tinggi dan berjaya insyaallah excellencies ladies and gentlemen in 1972 intel opened its first overseas production facility in malaysia investing 1.6 million us dollars the plant was built on what used to be a paddy field near my village incidentally a true story where the calf of future intel ceo andy grove was stuck in the mud during a visit to the plant in the monsoon season the mud is gone in zilaji don't worry many multinational companies like amd hitachi clarion robert bosch electronics now osram then followed suit setting up operations in malaysia over time Macron and Infineon joined them. And incidentally, you know about Infineon's latest announcement of 5 billion euros on the front end into Malaysia. More importantly, from Malaysia's perspective, we successfully developed homegrown companies such as Inari, Vitrox, Opstar, Skychip, Pentamaster, creating a truly local global ecosystem. In the 50 years since Intel's arrival, we have built a solid foundation and thriving semiconductor ecosystem. We have end-to-end -end supply chain with market access through FTAs and a skilled multilingual workforce. They have Urdu, they have Hindi, other than Malay, Chinese, and Tamil. So don't worry, you survive here. The government has provided numerous incentives to promote industry growth. Our robust industrial parts in Kulim, Batu Kawan. And incidentally, I was in Batu Kawan just a few months back to open the, the, the third phase of the industrial complex. And last month, when I met the chief minister, it was almost all taken up. To the extent that we have now to set up a new um, high-tech uh, Green Center in Krian, in the North Para bordering um, Province Balisli. Now we have in Bayan Lapas, as, a, as well as our international airports and seaports, showcase our world-class infrastructure. Now I'm not suggesting that we are satisfied, as Bernard Shaw used to say, "There's always room for improvement, and the room is large enough." Uh, to the capacity to improve at a faster pace. We also have excellent enabling institutions, including centers of excellence, universities, research arms, and industry association to drive innovation, conduct cutting-edge research, and nurture talent for the semi-industry, semiconductor industry. Our strategic position in the global supply chain is well recognized. And confidence remains strong. In 2023 alone, Penang, where I come from, I'm not biased. I must represent the whole country. Penang received 12.8 billion dollars in FDI, 61 billion ringgit, 
from semiconductor MNCs more than the previous seven years combined. Notably, Intel announced $7 billion, 30 billion ringgit investment in the new manufacturing facility there. Uh, with that sort of progress, I don't know why I'm wasting time in Kuala Lumpur. The reason being, we're expanding the facility throughout the country. I was in Sarawak uh, yesterday and, and last night, and it has now become a major hub for energy, renewable energy, and green hydrogen and ammonia for the region, the outstanding pace of development. Now, the past half century has seen us become the sixth largest exporter for semiconductor and tenth in terms of E and E products, but we remain over concentrated in the back end process. The outsource assembly and testing, or SAT, part of the supply chain. While we are proud of our achievements and to have placed in design, fabrication, and manufacturing equipment, we have a strong capacity to diversify and move higher in the value chain. This means building our existing foundations to move towards even more high-end manufacturing, semiconductor design, enhanced OSAT, and advanced packaging. You see, when I say enhanced, you know that I'm English, British English, not American English. The American will insist that my pronunciation is wrong because they would say enhance. <laughs> no. So advanced packaging as well as sophisticated semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Our vision, therefore, is to create an ecosystem driven by dynamic Malaysian firms and world-class talent while partnering with global companies to compete regionally and globally based on innovation and creativity. Excellencies, son excellence, son excellencia. Ladies and gentlemen, in this vein, Malaysia is offering itself as a bridge to connect countries open to tech collaboration. Right here on our shores, Malaysia is already a melting pot of local and international tech talent, making it easy for companies rooted here to be regionally and globally competitive. Malaysia is also offering itself as neutral ground that ensures all tech collaborations from the east and the west, north and the south, happening here will serve positive purposes. Our motto, Malaysia, bridging technology for our shared tomorrow reflects our commitment to connecting current technological capabilities with future humanity, enhancing innovations, not enhancing, Ajit, enhancing innovations while building a more secure and resilient supply chain for the global semiconductor industry. Technology is evolving rapidly. And you have heard experts today, I'm sure, in the next uh, one or two days. Uh, technology is evolving in the post-normal times. The pace and speed is unprecedented. For example, Netflix took three and a half years to reach a million users. Facebook took 10 months. Instagram took two and a half, 2.5 months, two and a half months. And ChatGBT just took five days. Hence, we need to be agile and adaptable by strengthening our foundations to different contexts and circumstances, not circumstances. <laughs> we also recognize that reaching the frontiers of chips technology is neither easy nor cheap. The world's leading chip manufacturer, the SMC in Taiwan, has a capital expenditure budget of 28 to 32 billion US dollars for 2024. While it will take us time to reach there, we are currently focusing on other parts of the value chain. For instance, 
EVs contain over 3,000 chips, two to five times that of internal combustion engine, ICE, vehicles. With the growth of the global EV market, Malaysia could become the key hub to supply power chips to EV cars. These power chips are key in energy transition and decarbonisation technologies. And through Malaysia's new Industrial Master Plan 2020, and IMP, this, because after all, insists that I mention, because this is his idea, the new Industrial Master Plan, and the National Energy Transition Roadmap, and ETR, we also have the right policy enablers and incentives for companies wishing to, man wishing to manufacture, manufacture them here. Moreover, mo the government aims to have 40% of Malaysia's primary energy mix from renewable sources by 2035. This initiative aims to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 10 million tons annually and achieve 100% renewable energy by 2050. The government supports exploring new technologies like green hydrogen, nuclear technology, and large-scale energy storage to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and meet the 2016 Paris Accords targets. Starting this September, inshallah, third-party access, TPA, will be allowed in the national electricity supply industry, enabling other parties to supply energy using the Naga National Bahats transmission lines, reflecting high foreign investor interest in Malaysia. Against this backdrop, during our National Investment Committee meeting on the 16th of April, very, very recent, I requested, well, not requested, she leave it as a polite term, I instructed <laughs> for a strategic plan for Malaysia's semiconductor industry. Today, thanks to my colleagues, particularly Miti, six weeks later, I am pleased to share with you the salient features of Malaysia's national semiconductor strategy. Now, let my Miti And its agencies and involving various ministries, the NSS is a robust, agile, inclusive, and forward-thinking strategy. This plan, structured in three phases, is designed to foster collaboration with companies across ASEAN, Asia, and the global stage. Phase one involves building on our foundations. In this phase, we will leverage on our industry's existing capacity and capabilities to support modernization of OSAT and with moves towards advanced packaging. Grow existing FAPs in Malaysia and pursue FDI on expanding capacity in trailing edge chips, particularly power chips, as well as develop local chip design champions. Phase two is all about moving to the frontier. We'll pursue cutting-edge logic and memory chips design, fabrication, and testing, and looking to integrate the purchases of these chips. Once phase one is implemented, more leading advanced chips manufacturers will be attracted to our shores. This is where our local design champions can be easily integrated into the ecosystem of these advanced fab companies. Now, phase three is all about innovating at the frontier. The next phase is to continue doubling down by supporting the development of a world-class Malaysian semiconductor design, advanced packaging, and manufacturing equipment firms, while at the same time attracting the buyers of advanced chips such as Apple, Huawei, Lenovo, and other such cutting-edge companies to pursue advanced manufacturing in Malaysia. To see flexible and agile, the NSS will be a living document, evolving as needed, but we remain steadfast in our aspiration to make Malaysia a major global player 
in accessible technology for all, powered by our semiconductor industry. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to stay on track, these are the five headline targets for the NSS. Firstly, on investments, we'll court at least 500 billion ringgit of investments in phase one, with domestic direct investment focusing on IC design, advanced packaging and manufacturing equipment, and FDI focusing on water FAPs and manufacturing equipment. By phase two, we want to establish at least 10 Malaysian companies in design and advanced packaging with revenues between 1 to 4.7 billion ringgit or 210 to 1 billion dollars and at least 100 semiconductor related companies with revenues close to 1 billion ringgit 210 billion dollars a million dollars creating higher wages for Malaysian workers. Now, R&D Hub developed Malaysia as a global R&D hub for semiconductors, featuring world-class universities, corporate R&D, and centers of excellence, blending the very best of Malaysian and international talent. Training, train and upskill 60,000 high-skilled Malaysian engineers. Fiscal support, allocate at least 25 billion ringgit, $5.3 billion dollars, in fiscal support to operationalize the NSS with targeted incentives, details of which will be announced by METI soon. In reaffirming Malaysia's commitment to becoming a global leader in semiconductor industry, the National Semiconductor Strategic Task Force, with CREST serving as the Secretariat, focuses on fostering innovation, enhancing research and development capabilities, and driving the commercialization of the semiconductor technologies. Ultimately, the, SS, the NSS is a means for Malaysia to advance and democratize technology for the good of all humanity. To achieve this, we need your support, both from those here today and others beyond this room. Geopolitical dynamics aside, a robust multinational semiconductor produ production remains vital for humankind's survival, particularly as we are running out of time in our climate action and risk mitigation. Today, I offer our nation as the most neutral and non-aligned location for semiconductor production to help build a more secure and resilient global semiconductor supply chain. On that note, our key proposition of Malaysia bridging technology for, shed, for our shed tomorrow reflects our sincere aspiration to promote technology for humanity's greater good by being your leading partner and collaborator in the global semiconductor industry and beyond. Whether you are sitting here as an investor, sovereign wealth funds, manufacturer, engineer, or policymaker, you are welcome to join in this transformative journey towards a more inclusive, resilient, and impactful semiconductor, semiconductor future for Malaysia and the world. Terima kasih. Thank you.